the groove. There's no reason to prove. RTF Sports Talk. Rooms. RTF Sports Talk. RTF Sports Talk. RTF Sports Talk. And welcome to RTF Sports Talk. I'm the host, Michael Buckheister. Hope everybody's having a great day. If you're joining us live on YouTube here, be sure to hit that bell icon, subscribe, and like this video. And go ahead and share it for us as well. Just help us spread the word, get it out, spread, spread our wings and let us fly. But today, we're going to talk about a little bit of Red River, Red River, Red River rivalry, a little bit of Colts and Patriots. But first, let me uh, welcome my, my uh, co-host of the show, Billy Hatton. Billy, how you doing today? I'm um, doing all right. Nice little day. Been busy this morning, but nothing like talking some sports. And speaking of sports, rivalries are what makes sports sports. And like in the end, getting hyped up to play this one team, this once a year, it's it's basically their Super Bowl in the end. And speaking of rivalries, we have Texas versus Oklahoma in the Red River Shootout. Five and zero, Oklahoma comes in. Uh, goes to Dallas to face uh, four and one Texas as they face off at, at the Cotton Bowl. So, Billy, who wins this game and why? I think this is just to start off. I think Oklahoma is going to win this game, but um, I will give Texas a lot of credit uh, since that since that loss to Maryland. Uh, they have been absolutely, uh, you know, on a tear. Of uh, you know, they're now they're four and one, uh, but I think. Oklahoma has probably the, if not the best, the second best player in college football right now, and that's Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray has been on the tear, 77, 109, over 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns, only two interceptions. I mean, this if this guy wasn't already picked to play baseball, if he hadn't already made up his mind to go play baseball before the, the start of the year, uh, my money would be he would probably be depending on which team is picking first in the draft this year. He would probably be the first guy taken off the board. Um, I think this guy is, is this good, is that good. You watch him, the ball just—I mean—it just shoots off his hands. He's he's crazy accurate with it. Uh, you know, uh, and then you know he has targets like uh, Marquise Brown, the uh, uh, his his favorite receiver, with over 500 yards on the season, five touchdowns. Um, he scored in every game so far this year. This Oklahoma team is it, it, for real. Uh, I know they, they had a little scare, I believe, a couple weeks ago. I, I think it was against Army. Uh, but this team is for real. I think I think Kyler Murray is going to give them the edge over Texas. Although I like what Texas is doing over there, you know. Uh, but I think Oklahoma has a, is, is a little bit better, you know. So I got Oklahoma winning this game. It's, so just to – uh, let out some history of this rivalry. Since two since since two thousand nine, you've had quarterbacks such as Colt McCoy drafted to to the Browns. You had Gerald Hurd, Case McCoy, and then you had um, you know Landry Jones and Baker Baker. Uh, so I believe what it looks like four out of those five quarterbacks have they have all made it to the NFL at some point. So. You truly don't think that Murray is like if he has the opportunity to go in the top five picks in the NFL draft that he wouldn't go. Uh, no. Well, see, uh, that situation gets a little bit dicey right now with with Kyler Murray because before the season, he already signed his deal to go play baseball. He's already taken he's already taken money, the signing bonus that they gave him to go play baseball after this year you know he already said this would be his last year now for him to 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 rescind that now what does the ncaa do to kyler murray because he's essentially taking money you know and then you're going to play football so now you're going to open up a whole nother can of worms with every other two 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 sport athlete 
that 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 decides, let me get some money because I'm struggling right now. Let me take this money and then, oh, well, I'm going to go play football, you know. So I think that's a little bit dicey with, with Colin Murray. I think he's already made up his mind. Uh, he already knew the buzz that he was going to be getting, you know, because people were already picking him. A lot of these college football analysts was already picking him to be one of the top quarterbacks anyways coming out uh, this year because of what he he done, you know, in, in that half when, when Baker was suspended last year. And just just from scouting him. So I think the NCAA would have a problem if he then decides to say, you know what, now I don't want to play baseball. I'm going to go play football. Because it's not as if when he gets signed to the NFL, he's not going to have the money to pay back. I think the signing bonus is like for $4 million, mm-hmm. $4.66 million, something like that. Uh, so – what does the NCAA do with every other two-sport athlete that decides, yeah, you know what, I'm going to go play baseball because I can still play football because I'm not receiving any football money. I'm receiving money from another sport. So I, I think he stays and play baseball. He probably wishes that he could probably play football with the buzz he's getting, but I'm pretty sure I, I think he likes taking that money, you know, and I think, uh, I think that he's going to go play baseball. Yeah, and uh, just c- kind of echo of what you said. Like, there's actually more money to be made in the major league for sure b- baseball system, for sure. There. And, and and the and the long and the longevity of his career is definitely going to be with baseball. You know, they're playing to forty and forty five even. So for sure. But let's go ahead and move on to tonight's NFL game, Billy. You have the uh, Colts versus the Patriots. The Colts are coming off a lost to Miami in overtime with a quote-unquote controversial call uh, on that fourth down. And then you have the Patriots coming off a thrashing of the Miami Dolphins. Just some history here. The Patriots do lead the series. They are 47-28, and including 4-1 and versus the playoffs against the Colts. And they are 8-2 and at home versus the Colts. Who do you got tonight and why? Oh, I got the Colts winning this. I mean, the Patriots winning this. I almost made a mistake there. Uh, I got the <laughs> I got the Patriots winning this game. Uh, I just don't think the Colts are there yet. I think they're missing a lot of pieces. Their defense is not that great. The offensive line is still shaky. They don't have a good running game. I think the only bright spot they have on that team right now is um, I like their coach Frank Wright. He he he, he seems he seems to be you know a, a a pretty good coach. And I like obviously you know you got Andrew Luck. But I think this week you're getting Julian Edelman back. You already got Josh Gordon last week. You got oh, uh, you still have Gronkowski, and you have that guy Tom Brady uh, playing quarterback. You know, I think this is prime um, short week after what the Colts went through uh, last week. Uh, you mentioned the, the call. I like the call. You know, uh, I like going for it right there on a on a fourth down with your quarterback, uh, who they say is the best was the best quarterback coming out of college since Dan Marino, if you can't trust in him to make a, you know, to get you one yard, then you're probably, you're probably not where you think you need to be. So I like the call, uh, but I think with the weapons that you now have given, that Bill Belichick has now given Tom Brady, you know, we, we know what kind of talent Josh Gordon could be. You know, this guy had over 1,600 yards with with uh, Jason Campbell and um, and uh, Brandon Wheaton. You know, uh, I can only imagine what he can do with Tom Brady whenever he learns the offense. Then you have Gronkowski, who is probably one of the best tight ends to ever play this game, you know, uh, with over 70, 78 touchdowns uh, into his career, and he's missed a lot of games. So that says a lot. Uh, you got Julian Edelman come back from off a of four-game suspension and an ACL injury. Uh, I think there's going to be a little question marks there, but there's going to be no question to Tom Brady on third and five, uh, you know, uh, first and five, second and short. Who he's going with? Who he's going to with the football? And I think the combination of playing at home, I think it's going to be too much for the Indianapolis Colts. I'm looking for the Patriots to win big tonight, at least by by two scores. And uh, and history is is on your side here. Uh, since 2013, the Patriots have played on seven Thursday night games. Five of those of which have been quote unquote short week games, so three games rest. And 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 uh, on those five games, they are five and zero. Oh. With beating them, beating the teams, you know, uh, by twenty to twenty-five points. So, yeah, I just trust Bill Belichick's preparation on a short week. Uh, he, he he's one of the greatest coaches to ever coach this game. 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of Bill Belichick, but one thing I don't do is I don't discriminate. When I see something good, it's good. I, I think Bill Belichick is one of one of the best coaches to ever coach in the NFL, uh, and he will have his team ready on a short week. And it's not much you have to get ready. You have Tom Brady, you know, so it's not, you know, Bill Belichick puts in a preparation. Now, his defense has to be better because Andrew Luck does have the potential to light you up, you know. He, he's a gunslinger. He will take chances, you know, against that secondary. So uh, if Bill Belichick don't have his defense in order, it, that could be another problem for them. Last week they played good against Miami, but that's Ryan Tannehill. Uh, what do you expect? I don't, I don't see Ryan Tannehill as being a, 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 a very good quarterback. Uh, but they will face a better test this week, although he has been injured. Uh, we don't really, really know how that shoulder is. Uh, but he is. They are playing against a better quarterback. So that defensive secondary, Bill Belichick, they better be ready tonight. Because Andrew Luck. I mean, what do they have to lose right now? They're one and three right now. You know, so they're going for. It. You heard Frank Wright say it last week. We don't play for tie, and I'm going for that ten times out of ten. So they they're going to bring everything they got out uh, this game because they need to get back in that race in that AFC South race. So. Uh, Look, look, look for some big explosive plays by Andrew Luck tonight, but ultimately I think the Patriots get the win. And I have to echo that 100%, Billy. So let's go ahead and move on to the association. NBA preseason has officially started. A couple games played last night and a couple nights before that. But the talk of the preseason has to be Jimmy Butler and his trade rumors. Back before media day, I believe it was a day before media day, Jimmy Butler came out and said he wants to be traded by media day clearly that has not that that has not happened but since then the miami heat has has expressed interest uh the lakers have have expressed interest a handful of other teams have expect had have expressed interest in the services of jimmy butler uh jimmy butler has come out and said that he will not miss any time if he's not traded so no Le'Veon Bell situation here as their, as their season does open up uh, October 17th versus the Spurs. So the question to you, Billy, is where do you think Jimmy Butler fits in best on a current roster and a current team to strive them to a championship game? Um, I think Jimmy Butler um... – let me make sure I understand your question right. What was the question again? Uh, where do you think he would fit best – and uh, uh, so, like, if if he were to get traded, what team would he fit in best with? Um, I think Jimmy Butler has the type of skill set, honestly, that'll fit well with any team. And I say that because, and it kind of seems like a cop out answer, but it's Jimmy Butler, a guy who who plays great defense. What team don't need a guy who's going to give you everything he got on on the on on the defense end? He gives you more on the defensive end than he gives you on the offensive end. So you know. That type of skill set works well with any team. And then you go over to the offensive side of the ball. He's going to give you about 24, 25 points a game. What team don't need a guy who's going to score 24, 25 points a game? The problem is with Jimmy Butler that I see is he's not an alpha. You know, he needs to have a, a 1B or, I mean, a 1A. You know, he, he's not the guy that's going to take your team and lead them over over the top, you know. So he has to be paired with a, with somebody else. That's more offensive eccentric, you know, who's going to get more involved in on the offensive side of the ball uh, in order for this to work. You know, I see a lot of people, you know, he said he wanted to go to the Clippers as well so he can be paired up with Kawhi Leonard. I don't I don't I don't know if that's going to work because, while, you know, all, although both of them are good offensively, I don't think they have enough. I don't know if any one of these guys can actually take over a game offensively you know, to be able to score with the way that the three-point line is now. So uh, I, I don't have an answer for which team he'll fit best with. If he goes over to the Knicks, yeah, he's going to have Porzingis, you know, a, another good uh, defensive guy who can, you know, seven-footer who can step out and shoot the three, shoot the mid-range. He can kind of get on the low block every now and then, uh, you know. But right now, I don't know if it's that one team that Jimmy Butler just fits with just perfectly as of right now, you know, unless he has another co-star, a guy who's going to lead and he's just going to do the dirty work because that's who Jimmy Butler is. You know, he he's a dirty work guy. So I guess the answer to your question is 
he can fit he can fit well with any team because his skill sets don't 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 ask for I need the ball, give me the ball, give me this, give me that. You know, he's one of the guys. I'm gonna take what you give me. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna slash to the rim when I get the ball. I'm gonna play tough on the ball defense. So I think Jimmy Butler could fit well with any team, uh, not any one team in particular. Okay, so it has been, you know, the the Houston Rockets have pretty much come out and said that they want J- Jimmy Butler since uh, since about last week or two weeks ago. Um, you keep referring to a 1A, 1B type of situation. Houston definitely has that. Let's say, in theory, Jimmy Butler goes to Houston, and they still have, you know, they have James Harden, Chris Paul, uh, and then Jimmy Butler, and then Clint, and then Clint Capilia. Do you think this team would win a championship with that? Uh that that all depends on what you were gonna do with uh, Carmelo Anthony. Does Carmelo Anthony get traded? Um, because uh, hypothetically, yeah, that team could could push Golden State because I think with they would Carmelo. have enough defense. Yes, I think they have enough defense with Jimmy, Chris Paul, and and they have a rim protector with with Clint Capella. I think Carmelo. A lot of people are down on Carmelo. I think Carmelo has still has a lot to prove in his league. You think about what he did last year, you know. He averaged 16 points on a team where he was literally the third option with, 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 with two offensive-minded guys, uh, although Paul George is one of the two be- two, um, two-way two players in this league. He's still offensive-minded. Russell Westbrook, we know how he is. He's offensive-minded, and he still averaged 16 points last year. Not to mention he – not to mention – he he led. This was this was his highest three pointers made in a season since he's been in the NBA. So uh, last year it was. So he hasn't lost anything. He just wasn't getting enough opportunities to to make the best of those plays. So I mean, I think with that with that group of four, yeah, it could work. How would you swing Jimmy Butler's contract because Jimmy Butler wants a max deal, which is the reason why he asked to go to the Clippers, the Knicks, or the um, or the Nets. Because those were the three teams that he knows that he can get a max deal and they can sign another max max free agent, which is the reason why I say he needs to have that one B guy because he's not that type of guy that that's going to lead your team. He said it anyway. He wants to go to Clippers and team up with Kawhi Leonard because he knows Kawhi Leonard wants to go to to Los Angeles Clippers. That doesn't that doesn't show me that that's a guy that that's that's going to take your team over the top. You need to already have a team in place for him. And he comes in into a good situation in order for that to work. So, do you think he would take not a max deal if he went to the Houston or the Lakers or maybe even to San Antonio? Um, no, I think I, I think now uh, guys are, guys are trying to get their money because they know what what these organizations uh they, they know that these organizations don't care anything about you. You know, they get. They get rid of you whenever they want with no explanation. You know, uh, it's kind of happening right now in football. So I right. think these guys know now. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm getting a max deal. You know, you heard LeBron James uh, before he left the Heat. Uh, he said, "I'm not going anywhere anymore where I can't sign a max deal. If you don't, if you can't sign me to a max contract, I'm not going." Uh, so I think that's where these where these guys are now going towards now I'm going to get my money and if it's a good situation oh well we've seen Carmelo do it with the Knicks Carmelo passed up the chance to go play with Derrick Rose and all these guys uh with the Bulls when they were still actually contenders right, right. but he chose to go to New York because New York was going to give him 120 million dollars so I think these guys are now going towards let me get my money and then we can worry about getting guys in here now especially with the super team thing has emerged so well every 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 team has at least two two stars on their team, and if you don't, you really can't compete. So I think these guys are going to get their money first. All right, and speaking of uh, super teams and competing, like I like like I know next summer is a way far away, but rumors are starting to surface that Kevin Durant wants to go to New York and save the Knicks. He wants to team up with Kai with with uh, with uh, Kyrie Irving and possibly one other star to go to New York and quote unquote save the franchise. Do you think this is a smart move for for KD? And if so, do you think he will actually succeed in New York? Um, smart move, I guess. I don't know if that it'd be a smart move or not. 
the thing is with, with Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant is now approaching territory uh, of LeBron James status. And when I say LeBron James status, that's not to say he's better than LeBron James because I still think LeBron James is is a ways of head of Kevin Durant. And that sounds kind of funny to people. Katie's the fifth being best Kevin player Durant, in the NBA. Well, Kevin Durant. I got him as the second best. But the thing about it is people think that he's closer to LeBron James than he really is. And that's because he's winning championships right now. And I ask those same people this question. What's the difference between what Kevin Durant doing now than what he did back in 2012, 2013? If you remember that in that finals between the Heat and the Thunder, Kevin Durant averaged 30 points per game in that, in, in that final series. Nobody thought he was better than LeBron James. You know, so I ask you, what's the difference between now? He's still averaging 30 some points in the finals. The only difference now he's winning because he's on a better team. So just because you're on a better team, that doesn't equate that you're better than somebody. So I still think he got a ways to go. When, when we're talking about LeBron James, we're talking about a guy that was in his 16th season last year, carried that Cleveland Cavaliers team to the NBA finals, two buzzer beaters uh, in, in through, throughout the playoffs, averaged 26 points. Uh, per game, nine assists, eight rebounds. This guy hasn't seen the drop off. What is Kevin Durant doing differently to make people say that he's better than LeBron James? I, I just don't get it. So, But when I say LeBron James' territory, his statue, I think it's what LeBron James went through in, Cle- in Miami. He went to Miami, won a few championships, and what, and what did people say LeBron James still needed to do to go validate his place in history? Go win it by yourself. Go to a team where you don't have Dwayne Wade, who's already won a championship. You know, and Pat Riley, where they already have, I guess, championship culture. Even though I think also the fact that people say that they taught LeBron James how to win, I think that's BS. Uh, um, it's kind of like what what was going on with, with Kevin Durant. It's not that people taught him how to win. He just went to a better team. Right. When you go to a better team, that seems to happen. You win games. Uh, everybody knows he wouldn't have won and. 2007 with that Cavaliers team, so he went to a better team, and they won. I think that's the territory that Kevin Durant is going to right now, where I think they will win the NBA Finals this year to give him three Finals uh, uh, championships. He will win Finals MVP, which is going to give him three Finals MVP, the same as LeBron, and now the question arises to Kevin Durant is, what else is left for you other than to go, to go try to do it by yourself? So I guess that's where he's going to now, going to the Knicks, I mean, that'll be that'll be his 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 stepping stone, kind of like when LeBron went back to Cleveland, you know, when that rock they only really had Kyrie Irving on 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 that roster. He goes to the Knicks. They have Porzingis. Maybe you get Kyrie Irving. Maybe you get Jimmy Butler. Uh, you know, and he tries to go win it. Um, you know, quote unquote by himself without a two time uh, MVP, unanimous MVP, and Steph Curry. So. Yeah, I, I can kind of see it, but I don't think he goes to the Knicks. All righty. You guys heard it here first. KD is not going to to the Knicks. Quote Billy Hatton, 10-4, 1.23 p.m. East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> As always, guys, thank you for joining us. That that, that would be the show for t- today. We're cutting it a little short. Uh, time time restraints that kind of thing if you're listening to us on uh, youtube or facebook be sure to comment on that uh share it share it with two people let's help us spread the word help us get out uh if you're listening to on spotify itunes google podcast stitcher breaker etc be sure to f- follow the podcast for one and then give us a ranking as well speaking of podcasts billy hatton where can people find your podcast at uh, every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 a.m. Mount Standard Time. That's 12 noon. I am live on Spreaker. Uh, also, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm on Anchor. Special guest Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, you can find these podcasts at Apple, uh, Spreaker, uh, Stitcher, um, Spotify, um, Pocket Cast, anywhere where you find Google Play, anywhere where you find your podcast at. Also, make sure you go follow the Unpopular Opinion podcast and Twitter page at Unpopular2018 for all news regarding the podcast, when I'm going to post, when I'm going to be late posting the show, when I'm going to be late going on, uh, et cetera. And all those links are in the YouTube description as well. And I'll copy and paste them over to the um, uh, podcast uh, info box as well. But as always, Billy, thank you for joining us. And we'll catch you guys Sunday morning at 945 as we deep dive deep into the uh, NFL week five season. Thanks guys.